What's going on guys, Crypto Renegade here, and in today's video I'm going to be doing another hardware wallet comparison here with the Keystone Pro on my right hand, the brand new Keystone Pro, and in my left hand the Kivo Model 1 Premium Hardware Wallet. Stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss this one. All right, guys, welcome back. So in today's video, I wanted to do a little bit of a quicker hardware wallet comparison. I will put in the description and at the end of this video, dedicated in-depth reviews for both the Keystone Pro as well as the Kivo Model 1 on my left here. So if you really want some in-depth details on everything, I will link those at the end. But I wanted to try a little bit of a quicker update to get to the key points. Obviously, there's still the three categories that I look at when choosing a hardware wallet, which one I want to use. The three categories are being first, the overall design, security, form factor, and usability of the device. Second is going to be the coin support, if there's any unique coins that are on each wallet and or staking. And then third and final is the price and then ultimately which one of these wallets I would choose or buy if I could only pick one. So before I jump into the content here, I just wanna reiterate again, I have a brand new ebook, it's 100% free, seven best ways to secure your crypto, it's updated for 2021. Check it out in the description. If you care about crypto security, you'll definitely like it. And since you're on this video, I assume you do care about your crypto security. So go ahead and check that out at your earliest convenience. All right, so getting into the content, we're gonna try to make this somewhat quick here. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Kivo Model 1 on my left here. Now, again, this is a brand new premium higher end hardware wallet device. Both of these wallets, I will point out, have biometric authentication, which means it requires your fingerprint in order to sign, unlock, or use the device. Both of them also allow you to set up multi-sig or multiple thumbprints and multiple signatures to sign off and send a transaction as well. So just wanted to point that out that both of these have that. Now in terms of the Kivo here, I mentioned this in my previous dedicated review and unboxing video, but what makes this particular wallet unique is it has a detached carbon key and it has four factors that allow you to sign and send a transaction. And the carbon key here is something unique to any hardware wallet, meaning that not only do you need the carbon key and the device in my left hand in order to sign and send a transaction, but you can detach the carbon key and you have an optional beneficiary service that you can use if you want to send this in. For example, if you want to send it into Iron Mountain, which is a partner of theirs, for roughly $100 a year, you can send this as a signature. So if you pass a law or if you pass away or something happens to you, you can have someone retrieve your crypto on your behalf using this carbon key as well. Again, that's optional. It's not required, but it is unique. This is the only hardware wallet that has an optional beneficiary service, which I think is pretty cool. Additionally, you can see this is a full touch screen display. It has fingerprint authentication as you've seen on the screen here. Now. Previously, as far as the design and the security, this obviously requires multiple factors in order to use. It has a USB-C connector up top here that, that not only charges the device, but it also connects to the desktop wallet application. This is not air-gapped. This does require a desktop application there, and there is no mobile support. So even though this is a high-end finish with very high quality materials, this does still require a desktop application and computer to actually send, receive, and manage your portfolio. The other unique feature about this particular wallet is that there is no C uh, recovery phrase. Typically when you set up any hardware wallet, it requires you to write down a 12 to 24 word recovery seed phrase as a backup in case you lose your device or the device breaks. That's not required on here, however, in the settings here, there is an option for you to manually generate a seed phrase as a backup if you choose, but it's not required. Some people like that because that's universally used along among all 
I shouldn't say all, about 99.999% of all software and hardware wallets. So if you feel the need that you want that or would like to use that, you can certainly connect it to the desktop application and allow you to do that here in the settings. Additionally, like I mentioned, you can use multiple fingerprints and it does have that optional storage option as well. So that's the sort of overview broad on the Kivo Model 1 here. Now on the Keystone Pro, what makes this different here is this is also, again, fingerprint authentication, but also a camera here for QR code scanning support. Now this is an air gapped and wireless device. So there's no Wi-Fi, no NFC, no Bluetooth, no any sort of wireless connection and only scans using the camera on the back here and it allows you to connect to a mobile application if you have iOS or Android. So this is managed 100% not only wirelessly, meaning you can use the camera on the back to send and receive transactions, but you can also manage it on the go, meaning you do not have to use it on a computer like you do with the Kivo here. This is completely managed on a mobile device in terms of management, sending, receiving, adding coins and that kind of thing. As you can see here, this is a four inch touchscreen device. It's very similar to this one. This one's 2.7 inches, this is four. It looks and kind of feels like a small cell phone. On the Keystone Pro, there is an option here for you to add in a micro SD card if you want to. And then there's also a rechargeable battery pack, but also it comes with a additional battery pack, which sort of leaves a bump if you want to use four AAA batteries that come standard with every device. And as far as the security, I do like that it's air gapped. And I also, for my own personal preference and taste, like the fact that it does allow you to use it on the go with mobile support so you don't have to be tied or tethered to a computer. Again, I have more in-depth information on both of these, which I'll link and put in the description, but I just wanted to briefly touch on those key points. So category number two here, we're gonna talk about coin support. Since I'm holding the Keystone Pro, I'll touch on this here. I'll be perfectly honest, this doesn't have the greatest coin support out of all hardware wallets. As you can see here, it has Bitcoin, Ethereum, as well as ERC20 tokens, Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Polkadot, which also allows for Polkadot staking. Kusama is being added soon, as well as Kusama staking. And then recently there is a pre-announcement that's coming that Cardano is gonna be natively supported as well as Cardano staking on this device coming soon, depending on when you watch this. Also has Litecoin, Tron, and any TRX tokens, as well as XRP. As far as native applications, this only has about 10 to 12. They're always adding more. I spoke with the founder. They're gonna be doing a lot more development. Not only that, including staking Cardano, as well as DeFi and MetaMask support so that you can use this on Uniswap, you can use it on one inch, any of those decentralized exchanges as well. You can also set up multi-factor authentication as well, meaning so you can also set up a passphrase or a password. You can set up the fingerprint as you can see here, as well as a pattern lock. So if you've never seen the pattern locks to unlock, you can set it up with requiring one to sign and send a transaction, multiple, it's up to you. But as you can see here, if I turn it off here and I use my registered fingerprint, it does open right away. So overall, the usability of this device, I like it. I also like that it's air gapped and that there's no sort of wireless communication that could possibly be intercepted. This is completely as secure as you could possibly get. As far as receiving on the device, for example, if I wanna receive Bitcoin, I can go ahead and set up not only multi-sig, but I can also set up here a QR code that I can easily scan from my phone directly onto this QR code on the screen and set it up that way, which is pretty nifty. But overall, uh, this is a brand new device as well, and the usability has been a pleasure so far. In terms of the coin support, like I said, not the best just to recap, but they are adding more. And if all you're looking for are these basic coins, then you're good to go right away. Now the Kivo previously only had four coins that were supported. It previously only supported Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, and Ethereum. Recently, all ERC20 tokens have now been added. As of that shooting this video, there is no staking support, but again, there's over a thousand coins that can be added. For example, here I have one inch Ave, Band Protocol, Uniswap, Ocean Protocol, ZeroX, Chainlink, you can even use Tether, Theta, Balancer, Zill, just to name a few you can manage and use all the coins on this device. But again, currently no staking, but you do have a lot more ERC20 tokens, which most coins currently 
are built on Ethereum. So just wanted to point that out. They will also be continually updating coins and they will also be continuing to add staking and other support I'm told down the road. But as far as coin support, this also isn't quite the best in terms of other hardware wallets, but they are expanding. And if all you have are ERC20 tokens and or Bitcoin, then you're good to go on this as well. So the third and the final category that I wanted to touch on here is the price. And again, looking at the Keystone Pro on my right, this is sort of a mid-tier device. My point is, is my links in the description will always be up to date with the best possible price at any given time. So go ahead and check that out as a disclaimer. But for the sake of this video, let me give you the full standard retail price for each of these devices. On my right, the Keystone Pro here, standard full retail price is $169. And on my left here, the Kivo Model 1 is $299. Now there is an optional upgraded device that has a upgraded carrying case as well as a year of the beneficiary subscription service for free and that is a limited edition for the first 1000 Kivo model devices and that's $399. Again, optional, not required. So getting down to brass tacks here, if I could only pick one of these devices, as of shooting this video, the honest truth for me here is the Keystone Pro. Mainly for me, the reasons are one, it does allow staking on Polkadot currently, which I do use. Also, it is wireless and air-gapped, which I like the security of on this. It has a great desktop application, but I sometimes like to manage my hardware wallets on the go when I'm not near a computer. And then ultimately on the Keystone as well, it does have DeFi integration and I do like that as well. Overall, the usability on the device is just easier in my honest opinion on the Keystone Pro. Kivo is still a great wallet. I still use it. I still hold coins on it as I like to diversify, but being that this is more expensive and requires a computer to use, whereas this is a little bit cheaper and requires only a smartphone to use, I would certainly choose this one as the winner. But again, both are great devices, both of them I use. Just make sure to check out the links in the description if you're interested in any of these for the best possible price. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up here. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know down in the comments below. And then click here in the top right corner. I will have a dedicated review in depth for both of these if there's any details that I missed. And I will see you guys in that video now. Crypto Renegade out.